No, this side, this side. I don't know. Hello and welcome to another video and what is going to be a follow-up to the last video. So in the last video, I've been, can we not bend down? <laughs> I've been doing things. We went out on the town before that. I got my books all sorted out and all of this has been to get me out of like what has been kind of a low place for the last few weeks. I've been dealing with other things like chronic pain and stuff like that that just adds extra weight on top. And so I'm doing things that I feel like will take me out of that. Things that just like fill my cup and also empty it a little bit. Cause you need to empty it before you fill it. You know what I'm saying? Um, if you don't know about the filling of the cup thing, it's a very Buddhist thing. I love it. Um, but today I'm going to be following up on a topic. Why are we doing this? <laughs> that I mentioned last time, which is going to be like talking about social media. Um, and because that can be a, hmm, how do I phrase this? Um, personal topic. I'm going to make this fun. This isn't preachy. I'm not here to tell you what to do, okay? I'm here to share my life experience. That's what we're doing here on the YouTubes, okay? Um, so that's really all that I'm doing and because there have been a handful of people, it's a small handful, um, which is a sign to me that the majority really don't care that I'm not on certain platforms, okay? <laughs> but because there has been some degree of curiosity and because it has been a recent really positive thing for me to let go of, um, I thought I would dive into that. Um, but because it can be a topic and it's not the only thing we're going to be talking about, as you would have seen in the title, we're going to be getting into other things that I have let go of or stood firm in. Okay. Um, I hinted at this in the discord group. If you're not in that group, it is a great place to just get to know other people, to feel supported and to feel loved. Um, cause I'm all about that thing. Um, so we're I'm, basically, it's a vlog. I'm going to be taking you along through my day. I didn't realize I do so many things with my hands. Um, we're going to be going and like cleaning and just tidying the house. Cause we've done a lot of decluttering, but things accumulate. So I'm going to take you just tidying, just going about my day. I've got to run some errands. Um, but throughout that, sprinkled throughout that, I'm going to be talking about the reasons um, why I'm not on social media um, and other things that I'm doing to benefit my mental health. So before we get into it, let's go make some food, get us all, get ourselves a drink, what are we saying, um, and get comfy because this is really just a come hang out with me. Let's chat. So let's go do that. Well, let's cover it all the way. Okay, 
I am back. I am nice and full. I took my empty belly, I was gonna say my empty cup, and I filled it up with some really good food. It's one of my favorite meals. It's a tofu scramble on top of some rye bread. Um, normally I have a kale salad with it, but that was enough food for me today. I've got my coffee in my favorite mug. I will link it down below for any of you Harry Potter lovers, but I thought this is going to be the context section because I'm just imagining um, all of the potential comments that I could have on this topic. Um, so for starters, I'm gonna, this is context here. So for starters, I want to say what I consider social media. I do not consider YouTube social media. Um, when I'm talking about social, and we can get into that, we can have that little chat in the Discord group if you want to, um, but I'm talking about things like Facebook, Instagram, um, TikTok, what else is there? Um, so yeah, I don't really consider that because um, I know there will be somebody that's like, but you're on YouTube, so it must be, you know, what are you, you're a hypocrite. Okay, because we always want to poke holes in things. Anywho, um, so now as far as like my history on social media, I've actually really been off of it for a very long time. So Facebook I have been off of for, it was the first thing that went and I think that was like, oh my God, at least over a decade ago, at least. Um, and then Instagram, I got off of Instagram. So the last time I was properly on Instagram and posting was pre-COVID and it was more in the artistic community. So I was posting on more on what it means to be an artist, um, the creation process just in the, in the sort of group because there are these little groups that are created um, on social media platforms. It's another thing I don't super love, but um, it is kind of the nature of things. And I was in that group and I ended up getting off pre-COVID completely, like deleted the account and everything, um, not deactivated. And it wasn't until I started this YouTube channel that I told myself there was just no earthly way for me to be, sorry, when I started my Harry Potter YouTube channel, I told myself there was just no earthly way for me to um, be up to date on new Harry Potter things, new items, sales, all of that stuff. I want to just pause and think about how, how, how that, the reality of that, that I need Instagram to be up to date. Like, no. <laughs> Let's remember that that information was acquired elsewhere to then land on Instagram. So I just have to set up a system and I already have, and I realized like a lot of it I was already getting on my own um, through research that I do almost every day to try and be in the know, to try and have like fresh <laughs> on demand information. Um, but I got back on it for that reason is I told myself that I needed it. The thing that I want to preface the most, please hear this, please, please hear this. Everything is your choice. You get a choice in how you live your life. You get a choice on, um, realizing what brings you joy and what doesn't, you get to choose in how much internal reflection you want to do to find that joy. Um, I am not here and this video is not here. That's why we're going to have a fun, good old time um, to tell you what to do. Um, and also remember this, every single thing in life, everything, even my cat going to the litter right now. Okay. <laughs> Every, let me give that as an example. Every single thing in life has pros and cons. It does, flat out. Like, the pro right now, she's relieving herself. She's gonna feel so much better, okay? <laughs> the con, I then have to inhale that, okay? <laughs> um, so are there pros on being on Instagram or Facebook or any of these things? Oh, also Twitter, I just was never, it was never my jam. Um, yes, absolutely, yes there are. I am not blind to those pros. So that's what I want to say, because I know there are going to be people that are like, but I've made friends on there, but I have this, but I have that. Yeah, you do. You do. So you are the one that gets to determine if you are getting more benefit than not benefit. We're just climbing in my stuff. This is going to be part of what we're doing is we're going to be tidying up the house. Anyway, that's the context that I wanted to provide. Let's now, let's now clean up that area. Okay. Yeah, that's what we're going to do. So let's go do that. Hello and welcome to my dumping ground, which is my dining table. It's basically become a place where I just set things down and I don't realize I did until I see how much stuff is sitting there, you know what I'm saying? Uh, I will say, ever since doing that big declutter video, I'll link that one above. Um, gosh, we're making back problems a thing, okay? Oh my God, there's even more stuff. I didn't realize there was stuff on the chairs. <laughs> um, Ever since doing that declutter video, I really have improved so much in paying attention to things, but 
Like everything in life, it is a process, it is a journey, and habits take a while to build. So um, this was after going out, picking up a whole bunch of stuff. So if you have been watching both channels, you would be familiar. I picked up this Lotso. I picked up like a whole bunch of Harry Potter things. This is my new favorite mug or water bottle. Um, but when that happens, it's kind of like when I film upstairs, I end up with a whole lot of stuff um, and I don't always put it away that day. So let's put this away. This is us just kind of like, again, letting go, <laughs> but also letting in new and good habits. So let's tidy up this dining table. And then I'm gonna get to reason number one on why I'm not on social media. I'm sorry to point at you. So let's go. <sighs> okay, Lotso, we're going downstairs. I will show you where I'm gonna put him when we get down there. This is something that I'm really excited to show you that I got and hinted at on Discord that it was, I wouldn't say a steal of a deal because it's still not pricey. There are two items in here and I got a good deal. That's what I'll say. They're not made anymore. It's a fandom that I really, really love and may or may not have done a video of recently. So can't wait to show you that. A pair of shoes that uh, we ordered in the wrong size. So we now have to return them and pay the shipping cost and get a new pair, but I am obsessed. They are my favorite pair. So I'll show you them when those come in. Oh, and if you're wondering, why is there a blanket on your dining table? Um, my cat. My cat is needy. My cat really, really likes it. She likes her own personal space. She's staring at me right now because she's in her own personal space right now. Um, but it needs cleaning, so it's gonna come off very briefly. It will be back, I promise. And this is her, this is her little heat pad. This is the other cat, the first one that got the heat pad. The battery died, hence the new angle. But we are almost done. We just need to clean it off, then we'll have a seat and get to reason number one. You didn't see that. <laughs> okay, let's have a seat and chat. Okay, so um, also the main reason that I'm doing this is to prep for the next video. This is what I do before videos. I have to tidy things up. Ma'am, what are you doing? What? Okay, let's get into reason number one, FOMO. FOMO is a real thing <laughs> and we're all susceptible to it. Some of us more than others. And I certainly had a, like I talked about, I had a fear of like missing out on news on, okay, I'm a Harry Potter creator. Um, and I wanna make sure, okay, come here. <laughs> I wanna make sure my cat doesn't fall off. Do you wanna join the, the discussion? Like I was saying, fear of missing out. So as a Harry Potter creator or a creator of any, any kind, especially when there's like merchandise involved, but even not, like, you want to be, there's this pressure of being in the know of everything. A, you're just not gonna be. And it's okay. It's okay for other people to also inform you. This is where you check your ego at the door, okay? And remember that you're not alone in the world and you don't live in a vacuum. And there are other human beings and you can get support. So just saying that, because I had to remind myself of that, but there's also like the fear of missing out of things, of events, of, you know, even stuff I want nothing to do with. <laughs> Even stuff that I might consider, but just kind of realize it's not for me. Um, but it sort of brought me back to like being a kid and how I could not imagine, me personally, how my brain works. I couldn't imagine living in a world of social media and seeing all the many things that I'm not invited to. I mean, I remember growing up in high school and God, I remember my closest friends when I was really young, ended up being the popular kids. And when, as soon as they became popular, goodbye, Aubrey. <laughs> I want nothing to do with you. You're a little too weird. You don't fit in, you're not popular. And I don't think we need that reminder. I'm happy to not fit in, okay? Um, but I'm also like, 
a highly sensitive person. And I need to acknowledge that and go, this is not suitable for me. So that would be reason number one. Fear of missing out is not a reason to stay on something. Just remember, if somebody wants to be involved with you, have a relationship with you, have a connection with you, they don't need social media to do that. And I find that when there is work involved, the person is more invested in you. The relationship is going to be more interesting, more connected, more involved. And that was a thing that I reminded myself of. So that is reason number one. Let's now move to another area that I need to tidy. Okay. Welcome to my other dumping ground, which is my kitchen island. It's not so bad, actually. This is what I mean, like I'm improving. So do let me know in the comments, what is your dumping ground? Do you have one? Do you have a place where it just accumulates and you need to give it a little more love and care? Um, I do. So let's quickly tidy this and we'll do reason number two. I'm turning that just so you can see it. I actually keep it this way, but keeping it real, you know. Oh, I already feel so much better. Is this not perfect to be doing things that just clear our minds? I was. Uh, watching somebody that talks about like ADHD and how people with ADHD don't clean their home so that their home is cleaner almost. There is that, there is that for sure. They phrase it better. They clean their home so that their mind is cleaner. And that is the other reason that I'm not on social media. And I'm calling this the information overload <laughs> discussion reason number two. There is really no denying that we are overloaded with information just in general. And when you add social media onto that, you almost, I don't. And I wanna speak especially to my neurodivergent friends. Um, as a person who is neurodivergent, there are studies that show we take in 40% more information than a neurotypical person. It's why we get easily overwhelmed. 40%, that's insane. I'm talking about like what we're hearing, what we're seeing, all of it, all of the senses. Um, but even as a neurotypical person, it's a lot of information we're being thrown at, a lot of information we have to decipher what's good for us, what's not good for us. And when I just finally hit delete, she's just gonna interrupt the whole time, so just don't mind her. Um, I'm being overloaded with information of that one right there. <laughs> when I hit delete and even the lead up to it, um, and I wasn't even posting, <laughs> I wasn't even having the information overload of like, oh my God, what do I come up with? How do I make this different from my YouTube channel? Like, um, cause that's the way and that I would personally approach it. Um, I also want to say the other reason that I'm doing this, I didn't say this in the beginning is to control the narrative of my reasonings because I was actually on a podcast um, talking about this topic and this was when I was getting off of Instagram. And I really believe in um, speaking for yourself and being able to control your narrative. So that's the other reason that I'm sharing this. If you're at all interested in that, I can share that episode um, in the Discord group. But when I d hit delete, the like lightness that I felt um, of just all the information. Like, let me give you an example. I was trying to give my husband reasons for like, oh, maybe I should really stay on for this, or maybe I should stay on for that, even though I was feeling overwhelmed. Um, and I had probably like 300 people I was following, accounts like shops, um, other Harry Potter, it was all Harry Potter, other Harry Potter creators. And I had the number of saved posts that I had where you can save something and say, yeah, I'm totally gonna get back to that. I'm gonna make that recipe. I'm gonna organize that thing. I'm gonna, I'm gonna buy that thing. I went through it and I realized like, my husband said, you, you were never really gonna go and reference that, were you? And I was like, I don't think I really was. <laughs> but like when reality hits. Um, and so then I felt information overload to sit there and go through all of my saved posts 
everything that I thought was important to me that I somehow couldn't find somewhere else or within myself. Um, and I was like, oh my God, how do I get all this done? I really, I, and I knew I just really need to let this thing go um, so I can put my focus elsewhere. And we'll talk about that in a different topic. Um, but I finally decided, no, I'm not going through all these safe posts. I'm hitting delete right now. So information overload is a real thing um, and it's tied to anxiety. So if you also experience anxiety, um, depression, really just anything in the feelers, okay? I might consider how much information you're taking in. I even heard somebody recently talking about, I think it was, it was either ADHD or autism. It's, it's just neurodivergency in general. And that one of their tips, no, it was ADHD. One of their tips um, was to make your world smaller. And that doesn't mean like smaller in the sense of not growing or learning, but smaller in the sense of like, you don't need this in your life. And we'll talk about some other things like that that aren't related to social media in this video. Um, but just kind of me realizing, yeah, I think I need to shrink this down and remove this so, um, so that it is a little bit smaller, so that the overwhelm is not quite um, as high. We get to control that. And so I wanted to take that control and um, make it a little less noisy. So that's reason number two. Let's go upstairs and tidy up a couple more things. And then we're also probably gonna do an errand. I gotta pick up some things for a video. Um, and I need to do a little bit of research for another video. So let me take you with me. Okay, as it turns out, I have more than one dumping ground. Whenever I get home from the muggle job, um, I put my clothes on this banister here. <laughs> I have plans for like more ways to organize my house. And a couple of them are like ways to um, like plan out the week. So getting ready for work, knowing what I'm going to wear, which isn't a huge like fuss for me because I wear a lot of the same thing, um, but is more streamlined and simplified and just makes life stress-free. So, you know, future me is not going to be putting stuff on here. I have improved. This used to be filled up so much more, but let's tend to it now so that it doesn't get here. And then I'll get to reason number three. This is a thing that we bought for going underneath our kitty litter because my cat just has to pee outside the litter box. I don't know why, but she does. And so far this has been working. It's washable. It does like peel a little bit off this side, but it still grips and um, it still does the job. So I recommend it. Oh, have you come to join me? Okay. Reason number three for why I'm not on social media. I'm gonna call this the comparison in creativity topic. Comparison, as we know, is the thief of joy. And I wouldn't say personally that I sit in that quite as much as I used to when I was of a younger age, um, but I can't uh, sit here and say it doesn't ever happen where I'm on social media and I see somebody's photo. Are you seeing that I need to tidy this room? I do. We'll move there next. <laughs> um, that I see somebody else's photo and go, oh, I would like, I'd like to take a photo like that. Or I would like, or they see where they go, or I would like to do that. But what comparison also does is not just to be a thief of joy, but a thief of creativity too. And this is kind of what I discussed a lot when I was on that podcast, because it was more about creativity and the artistic approach um, as to why I wasn't on. But um, we, we can get in this habit, and I have, or we can get in this mindset of when we see the way somebody else does it, it can almost be limiting to seeing how we can do it we can almost forget how we want to express ourselves and that it doesn't have to be that way. You know what I'm saying? Like, there are so many other ways to do it. It's like, I remember somebody talking about um, sewing and how somebody who is a beginner sewer and doesn't, and this could apply for knitting for anything that you're creating. How if you are a beginner sewer, you're gonna end up, or they notice people who don't necessarily know the rules per se of how to do it. And so it then 
meaning they don't see the path that they feel they have to walk, so they don't walk it. They create the way they want to create and end up coming with coming up with creations that are more unique, that are more um, original, that are more theirs. I mean, if you look at some of the most successful people in this world, if you want to define success in a lot of ways, it could be financially, it could be notoriety, it could be um, how they're remembered by maybe their creation, their music, their art, their film, whatever. It's not people that followed an existing path or the way something was taken. Like, I feel like when we get too much into what other people are doing, and sometimes even if it's meaning well, because you want to support the person, support, we'll get into that. Um, you take that in or you can take that in as the only way to do it. And I noticed that I did that because um, it was only when I would go to express myself and I would look at it and think like, or sometimes I would look at it like many months later and go, this isn't me. This isn't how I would express myself. And that's how I want to do it on YouTube too. Like I remember um, Neil Gaiman talked about this in his masterclass. He's one of my favorite artists, he's one of my favorite writers, he's one of my favorite brains um, because he does things his own way. And he talked about inspiration um, because I think there can be an argument of like, oh, you're missing out on like potential inspiration. Inspiration is everywhere. <laughs> it's everywhere. It's also within you. Um, but he talked about how most of his inspiration, even though he does read other authors, um, is from outside his own genre. It's from outside his own medium even. It's not necessarily writing. Like I remember him talking about it was music. Um, so I feel like that's for me where I get the most inspiration. It's not other creators in the same field. And that's not me saying I don't want to support those people. That's me saying I want to be me. And this is the way that I get to do it without having, and this comes back to information overload, seeing a certain way because there can be a lot of like copying. Like I remember right before I got off, there was this video that people were doing of like one person here and one person here. And they're like, going back at each other and one saying one thing and one saying the other and they're normally on opposite sides of something and then I saw somebody else do it and somebody else do it and somebody else do it and it was honestly nauseating <laughs> because I'm like is who are you who are you but just kind of like a replica of somebody else um you know or we see we see a lot of stuff like that I want to do what I want to do. I want to express myself um the way that I am, take photos the way that I do uh create videos, all of that. So I feel like comparison is not just the thief of joy, it's the thief of your own creativity and expression too, or it can be. Um, and it certainly has been for me. And so that's why, that's another reason that I'm off. And it has removed a lot, a lot of comparison and brought in so much more um, real inspiration for me. So that is reason number three. I guess we're going into the bedroom now and sorting that mess out. Let's do that. Okay, welcome to my bedroom where my laundry is not done. I will say most of the time when I do my laundry, which we do need to do some, I more often than not do not put it away the exact same day. It's getting closer like the day that I do it and put it away to the day that I actually cleaned it. Um, and I think, I think this was cleaned yesterday. So we're getting real close, we're almost there. But let's put all this laundry away and then we'll get into, are we up to four? This is a chatty Kathy episode. <laughs> we'll get up to number four of the reasons why I'm not on social media. Let's go. Also, look at this adorable creature. Do you see her? Get in there. Get in there right now. Look at her. She loves her a cozy spot, but I'm about to ruin it. We'll see if we can work around her. Look at this little guy. Why is he on the floor? I do not know. It's not completely clean, I'll be honest, but I have this little being here snoozing 
And this is her house too, so I don't wanna like make the bed and be like, hey, get up, get out the way. Move, cat, get out the way. Um, so the next one, what is my list here? I'm calling this the time exchange. Uh, the time warp, not really. I want you to think about it this way. And this again, I'm not here to convince you. I'm doing what I wanna do, okay? That is what we should do in life. Um, Everything that we do, everything, it could be being on social media, it could be, it could be anything, anything that we choose to do in life, let us not forget, and it's something that I had to remind myself of, the time that we are putting into that, we can put into other things. Even when I wasn't posting on Instagram and I was just witnessing, I would spend my evenings, and maybe you can relate to this whether you're on any sort of spectrum or not, um, scrolling. I would spend my evenings scrolling. Can I tell you, I have already read a book and a half in the couple of days that I have not been on Instagram, um, the last social media platform that I needed to delete um, because I wasn't scrolling taking the time away to make short form content that kind of just goes away. It's the other thing I don't like about Instagram. We won't hit on that much because um, I'm not a big like throwaway content person. I like long form and maybe actually, I don't even think that's in my notes. I'll just say it. I like long form. I like sitting down and really being with people and really getting to know people. Um, but the amount of energy because creating content on YouTube takes Time and energy and creating content in anything, whether you're writing a book, any way you're trying to express yourself and put yourself out in the world, or even if you're not, you know, like you only have so much mental capacity and there are so many ways that you get to like fill your brain in a nourishing way, in a way that makes you grow and feel in feel inspired, feel excited, learn more about yourself. And I personally do not feel that that is, that has not been where I feel my investment is worthy. I can tell you how much better I feel reading a book and a half than I do scrolling through a whole bunch of photos. So just a thought. And like I said, it goes with anything in life. What you put, what time you put into something it's, it's opportunity cost. It's, it's the word used in business, but it's what time you put into something can go into something else. So it's your choice and what you want it to be. And that can go, like I said, for so many other things beyond social media, but it also can apply there too. And I just rather use my time reading books, creating more content on YouTube, investing more of my energy and time there because we also only have so much energy. Um, yeah. So that is another reason. Okay, we're in my bathroom. There's not much to do here, so I'm just gonna tidy up. This is really exciting to me. To say there's not much to do here is a sign and proof that I am improving as a human being <laughs> because this is another place. Any surface area is where things just collect. And it's really just a few things that need to be put away. And most days I've actually like put them away. It's amazing. I feel like when I get to the weekend, I'm just like, oh, whatever. And then I need to reset altogether, but. Let's do this, then we'll chat about the next thing, and then I think we're gonna run an errand. I don't know, I'll take you with me. Whether we find anything, um, we'll find out. <laughs> but let's tidy this up right quick. By the way, to, to the person, you know who you are, who recommended that I get the She Glam stuff, I have been using this and the Gryffindor palette um, like every single day. It's become my comfort look. I'll probably explore beyond that a little bit and I'll go over to Hufflepuff maybe some days. Um, we are getting into spring, so that could be a good one, but thank you for recommending it to me um, and letting me get outside my comfort zone a little bit because I am obsessed. <laughs> Okay, let's get comfy. We have another one to discuss. And I'm calling this one like witnessing 
the worst in people. There are so many positives. Like, I was mostly following the Harry Potter community, and there are so many positives. Like I said, everything has positives. But I also, it's like, you know what they say about <laughs> meeting your celebrity, like your, your, your favorite celebrity, like don't do it, um, because people are flawed and people make poor choices. And you're going to see that. <laughs> and there are a lot of poor choices made on social media. Um, and I witnessed within my own community things that just like really upset me. I witnessed a handful of people bullying another creator. Even if that creator was in the wrong, doing that is not okay. And I, I wish I didn't know about it. I wish I didn't see that. Um, it really, really saddened me and disappointed me because it's not what... Um, Harry Potter is for me, and it's not why I create. I really, really, I called my channel Love and Lumos, and I'm all about it. Um, so it's just like seeing stuff. I mean, I remember, I just, I remember a comment of somebody who I just really adore um, commenting literally on how amazing the community is, but then at the same time, shaming people who aren't on social media. And Obviously, that struck a chord with me because I was—I knew I was going to delete it, um, and I had deleted every other social media account. But I always feel like—I mean, Matt and my philosophy, Matt, my husband's, and I philosophy has always been on this topic. Has always been there's never a reason to bring somebody up and then put somebody else down at the same time. If you have something positive to say, if you want to talk about how amazing a community is, that's it. Full stop. There's not a reason to also put somebody else down who's who's not on it. I see that a lot in society where um, when somebody wants to say something positive, they also want to, for some reason, shame somebody else who's not in their community, who's not doing what they're doing. And there was just this comment about like how different you're being and like... It was so disappointing to me because it's not, it doesn't need to be said. So just like witnessing things in other people that even though like th that is their flaw um, or it's a comment that needed to be, didn't need to be said, or it's like behavior that just is not coming from a place of love. Um, I found really disappointing, even if there was so much other good that um, people do because there is. Uh, I just don't want to witness that. And I feel like social media sometimes can can bring out the worst in people because you can just say and do whatever. You can do it in a story and it go away 24 hours. And um, I think that's the other reason I'm not a big fan of like short form content. Um, but you know what? On this same topic, let's talk about community. Community is super important to me. If you aren't a part of the Discord group, um, do come join us. It's a really great group, but it's also a space that there is no algorithm. You get to be who you are. I hopefully am creating like a really safe space where you get to just be who you are. But as much as I do feel like community can be created on social media um, and has been, the depth, the depth to which it can go. Like I watched somebody um, recently who started a podcast um, and started it on YouTube and they talked about that. And they talked about how long form content, it's so much more exploratory. It's so much more like, let's come hang out. Like, because when you can ex almost like expose more of yourself, you get the more human, you get more humanity. I feel like from a person um, in long form content, it's a little less edited. Um, and for that reason, that's also why I like investing more of my time in things like Discord where there's so much more control, where there is so much more opportunity for a back and forth conversation. And I get to know you guys, like that's what community is. And I get to be involved in that way. Um, it goes, you know, beyond just YouTube. Um, like I've made actual friends. You would not be a creator. I mean, you can, um, without the support of the people that watch you. And so I really, really value that. And I want to know those people. Like, I want to really know those people. So we have even more ideas for ways that we're going to invest in community, hang out with you guys, like, actually. Um, and I'm really, really excited for that. But I feel like it's so much more possible in places um, that aren't social media um, that, that, that give us more control and let everybody be involved. Um, yeah. So 
that is another reason that I'm off of social media. I think right now I'm going to take you because the sun is going down and we need light. Let there be Lumos. I'm going to take you with me. I need to go to Joanne. It's, it's not that far. I'm going to hop on my scooter. Um, and we are looking for, I mean, this is being filmed after the video. So if you saw the magical vlog on the main channel, um, we're going to be looking for some like sprigs of like flowers I'm thinking to go in the cauldron because I have a lot of other bits. I have some ivy and stuff, um, but I wanted something with a little bit of color and I haven't been to Joanne in a while and I want to see what else they have. We are out in nature and as it turns out, um, Joanne is closed. So I'm going to try and make it to Michael's. Listen to the sounds of this, like how awesome. I'm out by a pond, there are ducks, there are birds, there are things moving around. Um, but we're gonna try and make it to Michael's. I have half an hour to get there and find some things. So if they close, uh, we'll go to Target. I don't know. I just wanted to get out of the house and be in a different environment. So let's go do that. How freaking gorgeous. All right, let's see if we can make it. We need to go. Okay, we made it to Michael's. I have 25 minutes. Let's go inside and see if we can find some bits and bobs. <laughs> All right, I found the color. Let's see if we can find anything that feels like magical that we can add to that cauldron, which you would have already seen that video if you saw the Harry Potter video. So let's take a look real quick. This is what we're working with. At least we have a color palette to choose from. Um, do we want purples? Do we want reds? I don't know. Oh God, I need to decide fast, but these are all little sprigs. I just want little additions. Maybe we do something kind of more magical? I don't know. We'll see. Flowers are acquired. Yes. I am now going to Target. The sun is going down. I'm already over here, so why not? I'm going to look for some more cutie cuffs. I've been wanting to come to this Target um, and see if they have the other cutie cuffs I want because I didn't get them last time. So let's go see. Okay. Do we see them? Do we see them? Um, yes, we do. Okay. Let's go through these. These are the, yep, yeah, these are the ones. Let's go through them. Let's peek at these little holes. Here we're looking for Bullseye, Puma, and Rafiki. Let's see if we can find them. Look at these flowers. Like, this road is so loud, but I love nature so much. This is so pretty. I love the deep green. It's not picking it up. Oh, it's so pretty. Fall may be my favorite season, followed by winter. Spring, <laughs> she's a tricky one because it leads to summer and I'm not a fan of the heat, but I love the life that comes out. There's so much life. It's so green. I hear the birds like, I really need to get home though. <laughs> it's like almost eight o'clock. So let's wrap this up, hop back on the scooter and get the home right now. I am home. Okay, so like I said, we're hoping for, I feel like this is Pumbaa. Um, I feel like this is Rafiki and I'm hoping this is Bullseye. We could have got a dupe, I don't know. So let's open uh, the one that I think is Rafiki. <laughs> I'll be honest, I didn't look at all of them in like great detail. Like the ones available, you know? Oh my God, I just, I see the little like, come on Rafiki. He's pretty cool. Ah! We got him! <laughs> His hair is a little on the frets. Um, we'll need to sort that out, but look at this cutie. I know we're here for some great deep discussion, but I find this to be so much more important. Are you ready? Oh yeah, it didn't, that was not smooth, but <laughs> we got Rafiki. I have a strong feeling about that. Okay, the other two are brown. Like there is a brown color to them. I really feel like this is Puma. I'm so excited. Okay, are you ready? Because the last time I thought it was a Fiki and it wasn't. It's Dumbo. Who did I say? Pumbaa? Ah! Look at that head. 
Look at that noggin. We got him. We got a Sapoma. He's so cute. Nobody's talking to you. Come down here, ma'am. That is quite the head. I did see that like in others. Um, which arm do we? Let's put him. Let's put him over here. Ready? Oh, that's a snap. I saw the black in there. Okay. Really, really want Bullseye. You guys know Rex is my favorite. They have not come out with a Rex cutie cuff, um, but Bullseye's right up there. Where's the darn pulley thing? Is this it? Here it is. It's brown. It could be a repeat. It could be Bambi. I, I don't know how I feel about Bambi. Oh, come on. Bullseye, come on, Bullseye. Oh my God! Oh my God, oh my God. I got him, I got him, I got him, I got him. It was like, it's like, hey, she's excited too. It was like more of an orangey color, an orangey brown. Do you see Bullseye? Uh, we'll put Bullseye. Well, no, these are both Lion King. I don't care. Oh, no, I didn't do it. <laughs> Let's do this side. <laughs> Let me just um, do this. Ready? It is like a thicker part of my arm. We got Bullseye. Well, we now have some of the best Disney characters that I can wear on my arm. Um, but I wanted to do like a follow up on the last topic, which was about community and how we connect. I don't know, just like having a safer space. Um, there's a lot of things that social media sites and there are some great documentaries and books that I can recommend um, that, um, they need to, it's like what Lush pointed out, they need to take the steps necessary to make these spaces safer so that we aren't getting things like bullying, like what I witnessed. Um, so, so that, uh, safer also in the sense of so that people don't feel that comparison, like just so many of these things converging that are very cognizantly set up that way. Um, where, I don't know, I can get into how I feel YouTube is so much different, um, and it's why it's the avenue that I'm personally choosing to express myself in, in like a video form, but those are really my thoughts on social media and why I personally am getting off of it, um, and have been for a long time. And I guess the way that I would wrap it up is I believe in action over words. I believe in living my values, um, and that's in action. It's not just in saying that I want to do it. Um, and it's all of those things that I value that I listed, which is not comparing myself, um, which is being myself, um, all of that stuff. But I still want to come back to, I mean, the reason that I did this video is if you are feeling that fleeting thought at all of like, hey, I don't know if this is like really serving to me or hey, maybe I want to go from, I mean, I was barely on it and I checked my hours and one day had five hours and I was like, how? <laughs> and the average was an hour and that was not even creating on it. But like, you know, check how much time you spend on it. And again, I want to reiterate Everything has positives. This is not me saying, um, A, it's not me saying I'm somehow better and deserve a trophy of some kind, um, and yay, I'm different. So I guess I would just say, you know, the phrase dare to be different. Don't dare to be different. Dare to be yourself. I'm not set out to be different. Um, I'm set out to live my values, to be more who of, of who I am, to express more of who I am. Um, and I would love to see that more in others. It's the kind of creators that I connect with. They're different. They're them. They're, I mean, unedited, as, as unedited as you can be. Um, but yeah, so if you have that thought at all and um, or want to get rid of it altogether, I just want you to know, like, you're not alone in the world. Be who you are and look at things in your life because, I mean, my mental health was starting to take a dip and I'm needing to do all of these different things to help um, pick myself back up. And the weight, it's like we carry so much weight and a lot of it we put on ourselves and we don't realize we, that we do. And because we put it on ourselves, it is, it is us that can take it off. It is us that can like lift that burden. So um, it was just so freeing for me. And it, and it was every time previously, and I don't know why I didn't like remember that feeling, but that's what I would say to you is just reflect. It's your choice. It is a personal preference. I wanted to share this, like I said, um, 
because maybe some people haven't thought about certain things or maybe they feel a little scared or the fear of missing out or any of those things or like they need it for their business. It's, it's nonsensical. <laughs> you do not. So those are my thoughts and feels. Um, but the other thing that I have been working on is, well, you would have seen in a clip, I am reading a book all about not caring what people think about you. It's so, it's so deeply rooted in so much of what we do. Um, and A, most of the time people don't, are not paying attention to you. It's something that was talked about in the book. But B, when you do that, and I tell you, when you get older and older and older, <laughs> it becomes so much easier to do. And I'm approaching a certain age um, where I feel so much more free to be myself. And with that comes misunderstanding with that comes assumption and judgment but as I've learned and I've been experiencing this a lot in my workspace um, workspace at my work that judgment comes regardless so I feel like if if you're feeling that and and you're and you're also a person that um, which is most of us as was pointed out in the book it's kind of all of us that at times we do become concerned or we do think about what other people think about us and ultimately we are the only person that lives with ourselves really all the time 24 7 so we should be the only people to really care what we think about ourselves but the other thing is when we do we free ourselves I mean like I said they're going to judge you regardless. People are going to judge you if you don't partake in something. People are going to judge you if you don't comment back or, or anything like that. Um, and I think about that sometimes when I don't reply to a certain comment, like, how will I be interpreted? Who cares? You can't control that narrative. The thoughts and feelings other people have of you is out of your control. Um, and the thoughts and feelings that you have of yourself profoundly impacts your mental health, profoundly impacts your ability to do wonderful things in this world is like I was reading a section I'll wrap this up real quick but I was reading a section on Beethoven who um, I actually wasn't aware of this but he was uh, going deaf and he was deeply concerned about the opinions of others and started to pull away and even considered ending his own life because this was his life's work um, was creating amazing music and it was when as the author pointed out it was when he came kind of out of the closet per se and shared with the world that um, that he is going deaf and it was after that that the weight felt lifted off of his shoulders um, and he felt free and he ended up writing one of the most amazing um, and respected final pieces uh, like he he was even there um, and somebody else was conducting and they turned him around and the whole audience was just clapping and he couldn't hear a thing but he made something so amazing because he freed himself of thinking about what other people would think about him um, because it would shatter the idea that he is somehow superhuman or um, you know a celebrity or something unattainable he is human and I think sometimes we're afraid to show that we're human. I don't feel that fear so much, but I certainly, I certainly have been bogged down um, by thinking about what other people think about me. And I don't know what they're actually thinking. And maybe half the time they're not thinking something, but I've just felt so free. And in that process of trying to like, of letting go of that and kind of not caring, I've, I've become even more of who I feel I am. But I've also accepted more of who I am and loved more of who I am. And this is getting hokey, but it is what it is. And I've also, it's made me set boundaries and say, no, this is me. This is how I operate. I am doing my best, but I will not tolerate X, Y, and Z. And I've been doing that at work. And um, there is still that quick thought of like, how is this going to be interpreted? And I remind myself, I can't control that. I can't control that. So I can, you know, just, just do my best, um, but be myself at the end of the day. And that's what I feel like all of these topics combined um, have allowed me to do. And I just, I shared it with the Discord group, but I just feel so um, that I had this moment of a few things converging and some of those were getting off of social media completely or the final piece. 
and not caring so much what people think about me and being firm because I don't care because because when you don't care you do um, reconnect so much more with who you are um, than setting those boundaries of I will not tolerate this um, or this person is not in my life anymore because I'm not going to do this anymore that sort of thing so I would also encourage you to reflect in that respect of like how much time do you spend thinking about what other people think of you um, this is a topic that feels heavy because it is personal it is a personal choice but I wanted to not just sit in one place and just yap at you because I'm not here to preach. I'm not here to tell you what to do. Um, but there have been a handful of people who have asked me, why are you not on there? Um, it's a very, very small handful. Um, everybody else, you know, I'm just so grateful that the content that I make and the person that I get to express of my, you know, own being is all that's required, you know? Um, so yeah, I encourage you to reflect. I encourage you to be more you and be firm in that. Be magic, my friend. And I'll see you in the next video. Bye.